Praise the Lord. Beloved, you're welcome to It's Your Time. My apostle Leon Kofi bringing you the word of God. And today I bring you the second part of that great message, the altar of God against other altars. Let me tell you a sweet account from the book of 1 Samuel chapter 5 from verse 1 to 5. Bible tells us that the Philistines, they captured the ark of the covenant of God and they took it to the house or the temple of their God called Dagon who was just a statue, of course, made by the hands of men. I don't know whether it was wooden or clay, but it was a statue there, and they took the Ark of the Covenant there. Bible says in the morning when they came, Dagon had fallen prostrate. The statue had fallen prostrate on its face before the Ark of the Covenant. They picked him up, stood him back <laughs> in his place. They came back the next day. His head was broken off, his arms were broken off, his legs were broken off, and all that was left of him was just a stump. This should tell you, beloved, that there's no God like Jehovah. Hallelujah. Some trust in horses, others trust in chariots, but we trust in the name of the living God. And I'm here to tell you that save God. Trust God. Don't go after other things. People will try to pull you here, there. No, the true, the one and only, only true God is Jehovah God, who has sent his son Jesus to die on our behalf. Anyway, I'm not preaching the message to you. I'm just giving you the, the truth, the word of God. However, I want you to come with me to Liberty Center of the Lord's Garden Ministries where I preach this good word, the altar of God against other altars. You'll be blessed by the message. God bless you. All these idols that people go to, they, they are demonic spirits, satanic powers that are at work. And you see, the sad thing is that these idols are made by men's hands, okay? These spirits were also created by God. Demon spirits were also created by God. Not as demons in the beginning, but these are fallen angels who are now, you know, in Satan's hierarchy and working evil. So God created the spirits. God created the men. God created the wood, the, the trees that men take and carve an idol out of, and the spirit that God has created also come and inhabit them. And they want to vie them against God. It's not possible. Because God is both creator of the spirits. Bible says he's the God of the spirits of all flesh. He is the creator. He created every spirit. Amen. Human spirits, angel spirits. He created all. God also created man. And God also created the trees and the stones and everything that people take to make idols. So would you want to worship the created or the creator? Talk to me, church. Oh, talk to me. You are very silent this morning. Praise the Lord. Bible says that in him were all things created. The things that are in the earth, things that are in the heavens, whether they be thrones or dominions, principalities or powers, God created them all. And so it's just a simple understanding that if that is so, that we shall worship God. And we say, Jehovah, he is God. Our God, he is God. <laughs> Hallelujah. There is no altar that can compare to the altar of God. These contrary altars are raised by men to fallen angels. Satan's fallen angels. And because Satan desires worship and is a master at deception, he deceives men. And somebody will tell you, oh, I know a place. And it's not, but you know, yeah, there. Then you follow. Now, when you get there, then because you are so desperate, sometimes our desperation is our undoing. You are desperate for an answer, you are desperate for a miracle, you are desperate. So you follow. And you come out worse because Satan has only a three-point agenda. To kill, to steal, and to destroy. But I pray God that anyone here in this world today will receive the spirit of discernment. To discern that which is pure. That which is of God and that which is of the devil. Because the Bible says the devil comes like an angel of light. You know, to deceive. And so there are many, many things that are happening in our world today that are highly demonic. Very satanic, but people will put a Bible on it and then they'll say it's of God. But I pray that we, the children of God, will be as wise as serpents, yet as gentle as doves. 
You see, because God hates idol worship of any sort, whether you, you go there willingly or unwillingly, knowingly or unknowingly, God hates idol worship. Exodus 20, verse 3 to 5, he said, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above, that is in the earth beneath, or in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow thou yourself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, I am a jealous God. So visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. So when we go to consult an idol, consult an evil altar, God regards it as you being disloyal. God hates it. He said you hate him. And so the punishment will come upon you and your generations. Some people are still suffering generational curses because their ancestors, their fathers, their forefathers went into idol worship. There are people who today are still held in bondage by these things. But by the power of God, hallelujah, I said by the power of God, there shall be deliverance. Ah, the Bible says upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance. Amen. There shall be holiness. And the house of Jacob shall possess their possession. Hallelujah. God said we shouldn't bow down to any of these things. Anyone who goes to consult mediums, go, goes to consult palm readers, goes to consult all these things, they are all demonic altars. Don't open your life to them because there's no help coming from them. If they give you this, they take this and this from you. That's what happens. They give you something and you are happy, I went and I've got this, trust me, they'll take 10 from you. Because the devil never gave anything for free. And the devil doesn't love you. Amen. Yeah. Idols are man-made things. Amen. And the Bible says those who worship them come under the curse of God. But no matter what altar it is, it can never compare to the altar of God. And so if you are sitting under the altar of God, the first thing is that you must be confident and you, you shouldn't live your life in fear and terror of other altars, of, of other mediums, of witches, wizards, and all those. You shouldn't live your life in fear of them because the altar upon which your life is put or connected to is greater than any other altar. In 1 Samuel chapter 5, the Bible says the Philistines captured the Ark of the Covenant of God. And you know the Ark of the Covenant of God was symbolic of the presence of God and they captured the ark in war, the Philistines. And they took the ark of God to the house, the temple of their God. Their God was called Dagon. So they went and kept the ark of the covenant in Dagon's um, temple. They put it before Dagon. This is this, um, a typology of the ark, what you see here. So they put the ark of the covenant before Dagon. And, so Bible says, and they rose in the morning and they came to Dagon's house and Dagon was lying prostrate before the ark. Are we together? Give the Lord a mighty clap of free. I'm telling you, you see, some people say altar versus altar. There is no versus. It's God's altar against other altars because they are not equals. By the time the people came in, their morning, in the morning, that God who was their God, their idol that they trusted the whole of the Philistines worshipped, that God had prostrated before the ark of God. On the whole flat. He fell down flat. <laughs> that God was on his face. So they took that God and said, hey, that God, steady. And they, yeah. they put him back. Now, if you have a God that you have to steady, <laughs> Come on. So they picked Dagon and said, Dagon, be steady on your feet. Dagon, that shall not fall. They put Dagon before the ark again. And then they went home. The next morning they came back. Dagon was on the floor again. But this time, Dagon's head was cut off. Dagon's arms were broken. His legs were broken. The only thing you could see was Dagon's pot belly. Lying prostrate before the ark of the covenant of God. Oh, somebody give the Lord a mighty shout. Say, my God, he is God. The Lord, he is God. 
to me be any who I see in me to me. Never so I tell you, I'm a catcher or yes, who is so deep. Say, I bet possible when him it will fall before you. All powers that are raised against your life, any altar that's raised against your life will fall before your face in the mighty name of Jesus. Wherever anybody will take your name, your picture, anything of yours to any place for enchantment, for divinations, and for sorcery, I declare it shall fail in the mighty name of Jesus. Any coven where they are taking your name and they are enchanted against you and your children, declaring that you will not prosper. I declare that that coven will be burned by fire. The fire of God will burn and consume it because the altar of Jehovah will speak for you. Is somebody hearing me this morning? Put your hands together and give the Lord a shout and say, my God, he is God. My God is God. Dagon was flat. His head broken. His hands broken. I'm sure Dagon was made of clay and wood. Boo -boo -boo. You know, in as much as you are going about your daily life innocently, minding your business, people are taking people's names for enchantment. In the office, ladies in high heels are going to consult. Men in suit are also going to consult. I'm telling you, in, in your life, in your family, people are looking at you just because God's blessing is upon your life. And they are taking your name places. But I declare unto you, those altars will fall. I said those altars will fall. Wherever anybody is enchanted against you, people even speaking curses against you, it will not stand. It is a council of Jehovah alone that will stand. In the mighty name of every contrary altar shall be destroyed. Because the altar of God will speak for you. Hallelujah. Dagon fell. The Bible says that, therefore the priest of Dagon <laughs> couldn't go in, didn't want to go into Dagon's house again. In Jesus' mighty name. Their hands will be frozen. Dagon's priest couldn't even go and worship Dagon again. The Lord rebuke every demonic entity that is after your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. This morning we leave the altar of God against any contrary altar against anybody in this house and anybody under the sound of my voice. Hallelujah. Any altar that is speaking against you and your family, this morning we raise the voice of this altar against that altar. In the mighty name of Jesus, I speak life to your life and I speak the life of God to your life. That no altar, no contrary altar will prevail against you. Your prosperity will not be cut short. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will prosper even as the Lord has said. Praise the name of the Lord. These idols, they are lesser, lesser gods because people have raised them up. But none of them can stand against the mighty power of the Holy Spirit. The mighty power of the Holy Spirit, none of them can stand against the mighty power of the Holy Spirit. You see, the altar of God is raised to the God of the heavens and the earth, creator of the whole universe. <laughs> he said he's the one who creates things visible and invisible. Invisible things, angels. Everything that you see and that we don't see, because there are many things around us that we don't see, all created by God. He's the omnipotent God, all-powerful God. See, God doesn't have power. God is power. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, I'm not to me. I'm not to me. And we derive power from his power. He, he's all-power. God is all-power. Amen. He's power personified. Amen. And, and so his altar is more powerful than anything. The altar of God is also a holy altar. And this is how you, you discern demonic altars. When you go to any place and they are telling you to do things, Fabisimbra, Nikobini. You know, hey, come on. Come on. Come on. When somebody in the name of God is ministering to you and say that, I see you wearing green um, shorts underneath your shorts. You get my drift? Can the Holy Spirit, will the Holy Spirit, in Tinyami Kunkri, he can't find anything to describe you but your shorts under your shorts. Flee from such. <laughs> Johnny, that you know that the spirit of divination is working. 
Because we have the spirit of divination, which is very much like the spirit of revelation. Divination. We have the spirit of sorcery. And all these may make the spirit of God. But then the Bible says, by their fruits you shall know them. And the Christian who is matured in the things of the spirit, you will see it from far off. That you will not be captured. Because the whole purpose of the enemy is to capture the souls of men into the devil's camp. But I declare to you, by the word of God, that so long as you sit under this altar, your soul will not be captured. Your soul cannot be captured. And the Lord will deliver you from, from, from spiritual hunters, those who hunt the souls of men for the devil. God's altar is pure. The altar of God is pure. It is holy. Amen. And the altar of God is powerful. The altar of God is full of grace and mercy. That's the Bible says we should come boldly to the altar of God so we can find grace to help us in time of need. At the altar of God, we find mercy. We receive grace, enabling power to be able to do all things to overcome. At the altar of God, we receive strength. And there's an exchange of our weakness for strength. Miracles come from the altar of God. Hallelujah. The altar of God, beloved, is powerful. Because the power behind the altar of God is the power of God himself. Amen. And we find help at the altar of God. This one, the Lord said something to me. He said, let my people be confident in my altar. He said, let them be confident. Let them receive confidence. And so I pray that you receive confidence. Since you became born again, beloved, you, you are under, your life is on the altar of God. You are a living sacrifice unto God. Amen. So no matter what the enemy thinks he wants to do, unless you give yourself to him, he can't destroy you. Amen. Because you are lying on the altar of God and your life is a living sacrifice. Hallelujah. This morning, the Lord said to me, tell them that I stand for them as a jealous God and I'll be jealous over my people. God said he's jealous over his people to watch over your life, to preserve your life, to deliver your life from contrary forces and from contrary powers. That's why he says that there's no weapon formed against your life that will prosper. Oftentimes we quote it, but we do not read. That's Isaiah 54, 17. But if you read up 16, right? He says that he's the one who created the blacksmith that blows coals in the fire to bring out a weapon. The one, the blacksmith who's making the weapon. He is the one who created the blacksmith. And he says that he's also the one who created the soldier or the waster, the one who's going to use the weapon to destroy so both the one who makes the weapon, the one who's going to use the weapon, he said, I created them. And I'm telling you that no weapon formed against your life will prosper. No more. It will not say, he created them. So why are we afraid? Why are you afraid? This morning, come to the place of strong confidence that my life is attached glued to the altar of God and the power of God's altar flows into my life. Therefore, there's no contrary altar, be it from the heavens, the earth, underneath the earth, or from the water. Somebody told me, marine spirit is following you. Let it follow. You are going forward. On the On the On the The Lord himself will deliver you from such. And so this morning, we want to rise up on our feet. Hallelujah in the confidence that we have in God, that the altar of our God supersedes every altar. Maybe you are being harassed, tormented in your dreams. Maybe even somebody has spoken to you verbally, face to face. Say, Obehu, who is she? Nyabehu ani yame. Onu so Obehu. Don't let anybody terrify you with words. Don't let anything terrify you. So long as your life is on the altar of God and attached to the altar of God, his power is upon your life. And the altar of God will speak for you. You see, all these negative altars, they don't speak. <coughs> they have mouths, they can't speak. Ears, they can't hear. Eyes, they don't speak. They don't see. I think I've told you more than two times. I'll tell you again because we came in there. One day it was raining. 
serious rain. <laughs> Last time I was going to Akosovo with somebody, I showed you the I showed you the place, the village. Who was it? Oh, the last I was driving to Akosovo, part was it you? Okay, so I was showing the person the village I've been talking about. The village is by the road, and, 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 and there's a slope. And so it was raining, and there's this um, juju man who has plenty of idols. And the rain was serious, so the rain was washing away things. And it started washing away the idols. And some of them were clay. It had been melting. And then the man was running and catching them. He catches one. <laughs> he runs back. By the time he runs back, another one too is going down, sliding down. Trying to catch his, 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 his idols. And yet people go to that altar. Those altars have no power for you. But the power of God. The altar of God. That altar upon which Christ Jesus was crucified. And the cross, that wooden cross, was an altar. Jesus on the cross was the greatest sacrifice made on the altar. His blood was shed on that altar. And that blood speaks for you. The altar of God speaks for you. And that altar of God speaks better things, speaks healing, speaks deliverance, speaks protection, preservation, speaks pro pro prosperity to you. When altars are speaking negativity, the altar, the voice, the voice of the altar of God will shut them up in the mighty name of Jesus. Lift up your hands and begin to thank the Lord. Praise be to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. God forever be glorified. May God forever be praised in your life. Beloved, you know that Psalm, the Psalm 121, where David says, I will lift up my eyes onto the hills from where comes my help. And he says, my help comes from the Lord which made heaven and earth. He said, he will not suffer your foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. What he meant by, I will lift up my eyes onto the hills, doesn't mean he will lift up his eyes to the hills because that's where God is. Rather, what he meant at that time was that the hills and the mountains in those days were places where people went to serve idols. They had idol temples, idol groups, and places where they served Baal and other gods. And people went there seeking help. But David was saying that my help does not come from those places. My help will not come from the mountains and the hills where altars of demons and devils are. He said, my help cometh from the Lord, the one who created the heavens and the earth. Hallelujah. Beloved, that is where your help comes from. And have no fear that your help will not come. He said he does not sleep nor slumber. God will help you. Amen. So long as you keep your trust and your confidence in the Lord, he will help you. And there's no altar, there's no power in heaven or in earth, contrary power that can work against your life. Stop being afraid of people taking you to juju. Stop being afraid of people taking you to all kinds of places. Stop being afraid of witches and wizards. The greater one is at work in you and for you. May God bless you. And I pray that your faith will increase more and more. And safety and security is your portion. Let me pray over your life. In the mighty name of Jesus, beloved, tonight I pray over you. And I pray that may the strength of God, the strength of Israel, whatever fails, be upon your life. And may God, by his power, deliver you from contrary altars. By his power, may he save you from demonic plots and plans, from witchcraft attacks, in the mighty name of Jesus, may he fight unseen battles on your behalf. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. God bless you, beloved. Now you need to give your life to Jesus. Amen. You need to give your life to Jesus. Why? Because you see, all power in heaven and in earth has been given to him. And God has given Jesus a name that is above every name. The Bible says at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, God himself. Beloved, he is the only one we ought to worship. Why don't you pray this prayer after me, giving your life to Jesus? Let's pray. Pray this prayer after Make it your own prayer. Stretch forth your hand towards me. Let's pray. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe in my heart that you are the Son of God who came to die for my sins. Jesus, I confess that I'm a sinner. I repent of my sins. Come into my life. Be my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. God bless you. This is the best thing you've ever done for yourself or you could ever do for yourself. Amen. Being saved. Receiving Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. And you know something? Now you are a convert, but you should be discipled. So find a good Bible-believing church 
to go attend and be discipled. If you happen to be near us in Accra, you can find us at the Liberty Center of the Lord's Garden Ministry, adjacent trade fair, La. Amen. And we have other branches being scrolled on the screen. Join us and be a part of this celebrated family of the Lord's Garden Ministry. God bless you and have a great week. And if you also want to be support, you, want to, you also want to be part of what God is doing through this ministry and especially through It's Your Time, touching lives all over the world, then, beloved, you can also make a kind donation to the bank account details or any of the Momo numbers on the screen. God bless you and thank you for your support. Have a wonderful week. Amen.